This lesson reviews operating on fractions. Fractions are part of a whole. Here's a half of a whole, here's a third of a whole, a quarter. You'll notice that as your denominator gets greater, the pieces are actually smaller. One thing we can do with fractions is multiply them. So let's say you wanted to go two times a quarter. So you can take a quarter twice and that actually gives you two over one times one over four. That's two times one, two times two groups of one, and then one times four giving you four. Now that can actually simplify by dividing the numerator and the denominator by two. You can, you can do the same thing to the numerator and the denominator giving you one half. And you'll notice two quarters is the same as one half. So in general, you're actually multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators. However, you'll notice that this division here could have been completed right away. So alternatively, you could have looked at, oh, the twos on the in the numerator and the fours in the denominator. I could simplify those first. Divide them both by two in your head, giving you one over two. Then you go one times one is one, one times two is two. So that's a little bit of a simpler way to complete your multiplication. So the, the, the easiest thing is to first reduce your greatest common factor in your numerators denominators. So that's what I did right there. Next you want to multiply your numerators and then you want to multiply your denominators leaving you with the answer. Let's look at dividing fractions. So an example here would be say you had 4 divided by a half. So that's saying how many halves fit into 4? Uh, by common sense, if you had 4 things, each one would have half going into it, meaning each group has 2 in it. Therefore, you're actually taking 4 over 1, multiplying by 2 over 1. So you're always going to flip that second fraction and multiply by it and, and it's always going to work out that way. So really you, uh, you have eight pieces, eight times that a half fits into four. And that's eight over one which is also eight. So you're going to multiply the first fraction by the reciprocal or the flip of the second fraction. And then you just follow as you did with multiplying fractions. And let's review adding and subtracting fractions. So adding and subtracting fractions is a little different. You don't cancel things like this, there's none of that. Um, you don't flip, there's none of that. However, there is something very important with adding and subtracting fractions. Let's just start by considering what would you do if you had to add a quarter and a half? Well, you can see by this picture here of this pie, or this cake, um, a half and a quarter is three quarters. You, you can kind of see that. Um, but how, how do we do that with the math? Like one plus one is two, four plus two is, is six. That two sixths is one third. That, that's not three quarters at all. So remember, when you add and subtract fractions, the pieces have to be equal in order to add the numerators. So if you have quarters, well then the rest of it has to be in quarters. So a half actually can be converted into quarters because two can multiply um, to get four. If you split this half into two pieces, meaning multiply both sides, top and bottom, by two, you actually get a quarter plus two quarters. And hopefully you agree that two quarters is the same as a half. So now you have two quarters and one quarter, giving you three quarters. So you'll notice you have to, have to, have to have the same common denominator 
to add or subtract fractions. So you want to find the lowest common denominator by looking at what f the, the two denominators can both multiply by in order to get something. So lowest common denominator is actually the same thing as lowest common multiple. So for example, for 4 and 2, a multiple of 4 would be 4, 8, uh, 12, etc. And multiples of 2 would be 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. So the, lo the uh, common multiples are 4, 8, but the lowest common multiple was 4. Now there are quicker techniques of finding lowest common multiples for bigger numbers, and uh, you can ask me about that or uh, maybe I'll make a video on it if, if I get enough interest. Once you have the lowest common denominator, you want to convert each fraction to that common denominator as we did right here. So you can multiply the numerator and denominator in order to have the exact same denominators. Then we can follow with adding or subtracting the numerators. At the very end, if you can still simplify, do simplify if possible. You always want to answer in simplest form. So you look for any common factors between the numerator and denominator and divide that out. All right, let's look at some examples here. So this first one is a multiplication question. Remember, for multiplying fractions, we want to first look at simplifying any numerators with any denominators. But in this case, we have some signs and some brackets. Let's deal with that first. Um, 15 can be written as 15 over 1. Always remember, a whole number can be written over 1, because if you divide by 1, um, it just stays the same. Um, with signs, try to complete the sign first. So look at positive times negative is negative, times negative is positive. So the overall um, answer here will be positive. Um, so now let's rewrite what we have. We have 15 over 1 times 3 over 14 times 7 over 20. So let's take a look at um, seeing what we can simplify here. Are there any common factors in the numerator and denominator that we can simplify? And remember, you can pause this video, try it on your own, and then come back. So here we go, we've got 7 over 14, 7 and 14 have a common factor of 7, divide them both by 7, giving you 1 and 2. 15 and 20 have a common factor of 5, divide them both by 5, you get 3 and 4. I think that's it, so let's go on and multiply, uh, multiply these numbers here. So 3 times 3 gives us 9, and 2 times 4 gives us 8. You'll notice that's complete. If you didn't simplify first, you would have had 15 times 3 times 7 and 14 times 20, which are really big numbers, and then you actually need to have a calculator. Whereas this way, it's a little simpler. Next up, we've got a division problem. So let's start here. We've got 1 sixth, and remember when you're dividing, you need to flip the second fraction. We can also look at the sign here is positive times or positive divided by negative is overall going to be a negative and then we're done with the sign. Just deal with it at the beginning and leave it there. So we got one sixth times the reciprocal, which is twelve over five. It's still a negative, I just did that at the beginning. Um, so let's look at if we can simplify anything. 6 and 12, both divide by 6, leaves us with 1 and 2. Therefore, we've got 1 times 2 and 1 times 5. All right, let's look at one with a variable. It's a multiplication question, so we can write this over 1. We want to look for any common factors between the numerator and denominator, and in this case, I don't think anything simplifies. So let's go on and multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. 1 times 5t is 5t, 2 times 1 is 2, and you're done. You could also write this as 5 halves t. You could also write it as 2 and a half t. 
Um, but this is fine. Let's go on. Here are um, some questions that combine the operations a little bit. So this one here, number four, starts with squaring this fraction. Now remember, squaring means multiplying it by itself. So you can feel free to write it out. You could also, um, n you could also note that, say, this negative. Actually, a good point here is that the negative in front of a fraction. If you want to write it in to one term, you could say either five over six or five over negative six. So. Notice the squaring part you could have taken, let's take this first one, squaring that would be negative 5 squared over 6 squared. You could do that, which would give you 25 over 36. You could also do it this way, which will give you negative 5 times negative 5, which is positive 25, and 6 times 6, which is also 36. Either way, you get 25 over 36. And let's just rewrite the next part so we don't forget it. So negative 5 sixths squared gave us 25 over 36, and then we want to multiply it by the reciprocal of what we were dividing by, because we're looking at how many twelfths fit into that, and then that's how many fives there are. So now we're at a multiplication, so we want to see if anything simplifies. Does anything simplify here? Yep, we got two things. So a numerator can simplify with the denominator, not not uh, numerator, numerator, denominator, denominator. So 25 over 5 gives us 1 and 5, 36 and 12, um, common factor of 12, so that's 1 and 3. So when we multiply that through, we get 5 times 1 is 5, and 3 times 1 is 3. You can write that as 1 and 2 thirds, but 5 thirds is fine for our purposes at this point. Next up, we've got another um, mixed operation fraction question. The division sign is here. So we need to work left to right in terms of bedmas. We can write the 4 over 1. We can also decide that the overall sign of this question will be positive times negative times negative, which leaves us with a positive. So that we've dealt with the signs. Now when you have a division, remember the the fraction right after the division needs to be flipped. So let's do that. 4 over 1 times 8 over 1. Notice I'm just omitting all my um, neg these two negatives because they multiply to give me a positive. And then rewrite times 1 third. So that's a little simpler now. Now you can look for any common um, factors between the numerators and denominators, and in this case we have none. So we've got 4 times 8, which gives us 32 over 3. And you can make that a mixed number if you like, and you'd say how many 3's fit into 32? There are 10 3's and 2 thirds left over. That's optional, you could answer it like that. Same with this one, you could answer it as one and two thirds as well. Leaving it as an improper fraction is is good for when you're going to continue calculations with fractions. Leaving it as mixed number is good for when you're giving a final answer to say a word problem. It's easier for people to understand it that way. All right. Let's take a f um, few adding and subtracting questions here. So remember, adding and subtracting um, fractions, you need, 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 need to have a common denominator for plus and minus. Making it a big point here. So what's a common denominator for 4, 6, and 8? So you could just think and say, what can I multiply both of those numbers, all of those numbers into? Um, there is a method you could go for 6 and 8, and um, you could find the prime factorizations of each one of those, and then line up any common factors. So the 4 was a 2 times a 2, 
The 6 was a 2 times a 3, and I'm only putting the same numbers in each column, so the 3 had to make a new column. And the 8 was a 2 times a 2 times another 2. That gives us um, 2 times 2 times 3 times 2. What this method does, it eliminates any common things, but then um, also makes rows for for unique factors. So that gives us 4 times 6, which is 24. You could try to come up with that number in your head, though, if you uh, are really good at the multiplication tables. So let's convert these all into 24. So 4 times 6 times 6 will give us 24. 6 times 4 times 4 will give us 24. 8 times 3 times 3. That gives us 18 over 24 minus 28 over 24 plus 3 over 24. Now we can just combine our numerators. So 18 minus 28 plus 3 gives us negative 7. Oops, that was supposed to be a 24 there. Sorry about that. Negative 7 over 24. You can also look to see if there's anything to simplify here, but there isn't. All right, next we've got negative 2. Remember, you can write it over 1. Common denominator for 1 and 3 is 3, because 1 can be turned into a 3 by multiplying by 3, giving us negative 6 over 3 plus 4 over 3. Combine the numerators. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2 over 3. No common factors, so we can leave it. Next up, 18 and 12. So this one, if you're not sure um, what the common denominator is, you can use this LCM or LCD method here. So let's take the prime factorization of 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 3, and uh, 12 is 3 times 4, and 2 times 2. So 18 is written as 2 times 3 times 3. 12 is written as uh, 2 times 2 and then times another 3. So make sure they're lined up, but if, if it uh, doesn't line up, you just create a new column. So 2, oops, two times 3 times 3 times 2 gives us 4 times 9, which is 36. So 18 and 12 both multiply into 36. Times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So let's try that. We've got negative 14 over 36 plus 15 over 36. And 15 minus 14 is 1 over 36. Let's continue on. A few uh, more little more complicated examples. So here we've actually got a like term type question because they're both x terms. So really what we can do, we can do 3 eighths plus 1 eighth, remember this is a 1 if it's not there, of x. And now the, co the denominators are the same, therefore we can just go 3 plus 1. We've got 3 eighths and 1 eighth is 4 eighths x. We can simplify the 4 eighths, 4 and 8 both divide by 4, giving us 1 and 2. So really it's a half x, which can also be written as x over 2. Last one here, this one's got some wording. No, remember when you have subtracted from, you have to switch the order, because you're subtracting this from that. Therefore, you're going 8 ninths minus 7 twelfths. So careful with that phrasing there. So we need a common denominator for 9 and 12. 9 is 3 times 3. 12 is 3 times 4, which is 2 times 2. So 9, 3 times 3. 12, 3 times 2 times 2. Giving us 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 for a common denominator. Giving us 9 times 4, which is 36. So 9 times 4 times 4, 12 times 3 times 3, giving us 32 out of 36 minus 21 
over 36. 32 minus 21 is 11 over 36.